G'day everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action. It is Metal May, the month of metal. I've got a bunch of OG 80s metal records to show you, so let's get into it. So I was promising that the month of May would be Metal Month. That's it, we're going to have a Metal May. That's hardly different to what we do around here, but there's a bit of a focus. Um, I have been hinting for a while about some vintage 80s pressings that I've been uh, acquiring and picking up along the way. And uh, yeah, I hit a few honey holes, um, mainly one large one, but a few others as well. And uh, over the course of what I think is going to be three videos this month, we're going to unpack 25 OG press uh, records that I, I am thrilled to have. Some of them I am still in dis disbelief I've managed to score, but we're going to go through them. Uh, today we're going to go through eight of them. And uh, the first one, if you've been watching the videos for a while, you may have seen in the background lurking. I know a few people have commented saying, I know what that is. And yeah, this one you may have seen, Chastain with the seventh of Never. This is the uh, third album from this band uh, named after the guitar virtuoso David Chastain. Uh, fronted by the amazing, amazing vocalist Leather Leone. Oh, she's great. Uh, this was the one album I was missing from their 80s four-album run. Uh, first was 1985's Mystery of Illusion, really strong opening album there, followed in 1986 by uh, Rulers of the Wasteland, which is a record I inherited from my mother, so props to you, Mum. Uh, the third album, this one here, Seventh of the Never, came out in uh, 1987. And lastly, the 1988 fourth release, The Voice of the Cult, which I showed only in the last couple of months. I got that one quite recently. An excellent, excellent album. And at the time I said, I don't know if anything's going to beat that fourth album because that, to me, is the strongest. I'm not sure, but the seventh of Never is really getting close to it. Um, as I said, I think I really enjoy my... It's a stellar run, but I really enjoy uh, Voice and Seventh, seventh uh, more than the first two albums. Uh, I just think they just found the sound even more. So just amped up, including the production or something like this. So what you get, big, speedy, shreddy heavy metal. Uh, I mean, when you get a guitar virtuoso, this is the kind of stuff you get in the 80s. Um, you know, it's obviously guitar focused, but it is definitely less wanky than something like Marty Friedman's uh, Cacophony albums. It's not just shredding for the sake of it. There's songs, um, you know, it's actually well articulated music here. Uh, it's still riff based. It just has, you know, when it when it hits the leads and hits the solos, you know about it. Um, heavy hitting as well from uh, Ken Mary on the drums. Mate down there looks a little bit like Dave Mustaine. Behind the kit. Uh, he was also in Fifth Angel and uh, a band I've never heard, but I know of in Impelitary, I think how you say the name. Impelitary, uh, another solo uh, guitarist, a virtuoso guy, apparently. Uh, and he's now playing in the more modern uh, Flotsam and Jetsam uh, uh, outfit at the moment. So that's cool. Uh, there's very chunky bass, as usual, from uh, Mike Skimmerhan. Where is he? He's uh, up there. He's got a big bass guitar. He's looking a little bit like uh, Kirk Hammett, actually, there with that hair. There's a sort of a Metallica kind of looking people here. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's there's obviously Chastain with his uh, silver pants and doing his wild solo. But Leather Leone over here, she is a top-tier vocalist. Um, she's got the range, but she keeps that grit. She's very much like Doro from Warlock uh, or even sort of like the Betsy Bitch from Bitch, great band. Um, but yeah, oh, so good. The album's great. The songs are great. Um, the second track, I'll flip it back over again. Not you can really read it, but the second track, Paradise, um, that one stands out to me as a real rager of a song, uh, whereas something like Wicked and Restless that follows immediately, uh, where is it? Wicked and Restless. Uh, no, the last track on there. Um, that one's a bit more of a chunky one. Uh, it's got an asterisk next to it. Why does it have an asterisk? You're going to tell me it's a cover song or something. No, it was just written by Chastain and Leon. She's she's involved in it anyway. So yeah, Wicked and Restless. That one's um, definitely a, it's a doomier uh, kind of track. Not doom metal, but it's just slower and big, heavy dun, dun, dun kind of riffs. Huge bottom end. Has the crowd singing in there as well. Uh, good one. The track 827, uh, just before that one, that is an instrumental. And yes, an instrumental on a guitar virtuoso album. 
the damn thing shreds. Um, it opens up with this just outstanding uh, short burst of playing the scales up and down. Like, I can't emulate it. It's just uh, like just up and down so fast. He must have practiced it quite a lot. Sounds so good. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, not just him that's doing the solo in that thing. The uh, drummers and the bass, they all get their own moments to have like little piece uh, of the action without the guitar playing. So yeah. Great little instrumental, and the side B is just as good. Um, I'm mainly going to be talking about side A's uh, as I as I do these reviews today, just to just to keep it a little bit tight. But um, yeah, the whole album is a solid A plus from me. Great album from Chastain, the seventh of Never. Um, is it? It's definitely on par with uh, Voice of the Cult, but uh, which one's my favorite? Um, a little bit more time with this. We're going to battle them out. We're going to see which one wins. I don't know, but. Um, Great, great stuff. Take a look inside. Um, so you don't get a, a fancy inner, at least I didn't get one, it's just a boring one, but it was rehomed in a proper uh, like high fidelity type thing. There you go, it's black vinyl. Good Nick, uh, strong VG plus, I guess. This one came out on uh, Leviathan Music, not too familiar with. But, uh, yeah, and really good cover art as well. I like this one. It's got sort of, I don't know what we got here. There's warriors. He's got a mace. He's got a bat. The city is being blown up by planes. Kind of feels futuristic at the same time. Like he's got uh, breathing apparatus on. Like is this the, the final war to end all wars? The seventh of never? I don't know. But anyway, it's a stellar album. So yeah, definitely check this one out from Chastain. Next up, we're going to talk about three records from the one band, starting with their debut. I already have one album from this band, but we're talking about Nasty Savage. Uh, this is a band I've wanted to explore more of for some time. Uh, the second album, Indulgence, I've had for a few years now, probably at least three years, maybe four. I definitely showed it on the channel here, but quite some time ago. Um, but in this video today, I've managed to complete the rest of the 80s run all in one fell swoop. So yay for me. Um, starting off here with the self-titled debut album, Nasty Savage. Uh, I both like and dislike this cover. I mean, I kind of wish, yeah, look, don't call your album your band. I don't know. I just, it's just lazy. Could have done something else. But, you know, and, and it, the cover artwork here is lacking, but the logo is cool. The logo is cool, and I like how it's drawn. So what's it matter, man? How about the music? How how about the music in this one? That's what really matters. Uh, this is basically very no, knowing indulgence quite well. This is less intense. This is basically heavy metal with a bit more, a little bit of a thrash grit in it, like a pre-thrash grit. Um, vocalist uh, Nasty Ronnie from Nasty uh, Savage. It's fair to say he's still working out how to approach this music at this stage. I think um, he's a bit like a clean version of paul bailoff from exodus on uh, bonded by blood like he, he's got that i don't know how to just it's it's a kind of loose sound and like if you, you listen to bonded by blood and the whole thing sounds kind of youthful and a bit drunken if this is this but he's not drinking the beer he's he's drinking the wine there you go that that's that's the comparison but still incredibly loose and just all over the map and how he does the vocals Occasionally, he tries the, the, those choral highs from, like, King Diamond, uh, supplemented them with, like, gravelly bursts. But, uh, you know, he barely sings a regular note. It's uh, it's kind of odd. He doesn't just sing a song. He, he's all over the place, a bit like that uh, first Exodus. So the combination of styles is is uh, the most obvious, I think, on the third track. Here's the back end. Um, third track, Fear Beyond the Vision. There's nasty, Ronnie. I mean, how much more metal can you get? Look at that. Superb. Absolute metal. God. Um, just oh, look at them all. Absolutely all metal as hell. Anyway, there's fire breathing happening. It's all good. Um, the fourth track, Metal Knights. That's a fun one. Short. Uh, reminds me of sort of a speed metal version of Exodus, really, when I'm listening to it. Um, lyrics are by, about spikes and leather, as you'd not be unexpecting to hear. I mean, look at this shit. When, when you're, yeah, your song is called Metal Knights. I love that kind of stuff. You know, when you have these older bands playing metal and they have songs about metal and just the whole 
the whole thing with metal and being a touring band playing metal. I love it. It's always so fun. Um, it only works on your first album, though. You, you do it when you're 10 albums in. It, don't do it. Don't, don't do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a line in it that is, Metal Knights, Poses Will Die. Uh, tells you all you need to know about that track. Um, it may as well have Bang Your Head Against the Stage. Yeah, okay. So that's followed by a, a very pretty instrumental um, that uh, doesn't get listed on the back here, but it's a little sort of pre-fill track before you get to uh, the last one. As Moodius, um, that one is a uh, very chunky, pure metal song, that one. Has some sort of, uh, I don't know, sing-along bits in it, I think, that one, the, 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 the chorus to it. That pre-intro thing, though, like is, as I said, is very pretty. It sounds almost like it could come off a Mike Oldfield album. So that going into this chunky metal, almost anthem, that's pretty cool. Open your mind from the inside, the clock will keep on ticking. So in 1987, the band followed up with their second album, Indulgence, as I mentioned, and I've showed it here before. Really heavy sound on that one, particularly in the drum department, absolutely crushing sound on it. Um, it's clearly a progression from that debut, but it's still pretty close to it in a in a, he a speedy heavy metal sound. Um, just heavier production, slightly more complex songs. But after that, in 1988, I think the band has been listening to a few Slayer albums because we released this EP uh, called Abstract Reality. Fun cover artwork again, doesn't make a lick of sense, but anyway. Um, I think, yeah, Ron, Ronnie has definitely been listening to Tom Araya in, in this this uh, period of the band. And the thrash, it, we're getting into the thrash here. It's getting more technical. Um, this four-track, it's only four-track EP. Uh, the band's faster. They're thrashier. Nasty Ronnie's vocals are getting nastier, which is appropriate. A little shoutier, more reverb in them. Um, and some of the band's best songs are on this EP. The one-two punch at the start here of uh, Abstract Reality and Unchained Angel. Um, absolute banger of a side A. Um, side B is no different, really, but those first two tracks. The title, tra Abstract Reality, is just one of Nasty Savage's best songs, uh, just outright. Um, so, yeah, it, and the second one, Unchained Angel, has got sort of bigger, heavier riffs. It's not that super fast one. Still got speed, but it's a heavier, chunkier one. And, yeah, Side B is no different, but... Here's the guys down here looking a little bit more... Uh, we're, we're looking less bullet belts and bang your head against the stage and, like, yeah, that sort of 1990 Slayer with, uh, you know, we're not even in the 90s. Yet. This is 87, remember? Like, but this is, yeah, 89, 90 Slayer. Yes, yeah, sort of getting into your anthrax, like it's all sunny out there, but you've still got a big evil statue. Yeah, we're, we're at the crossroads here, folks. Massive credits list on this thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, abstract reality, interesting cover artwork. So, yeah, we'll um, take a quick look in here. Also, remember that I just didn't show the inside of the previous album, so we'll do that. Um, yeah, nice clean uh, metal blade uh, press here with the old Axe logo, which is nice. Um, but yeah, only four tracks. So this is the kind of thing, these EPs, you know, from bands at this time. Like Nuclear Blast did a few like this, where I'd go, the EP is not essential. I would say, I would argue with Nasty Savage that this is just as important as the album. So... Yeah, definitely pick up Abstract Reality. Um, before we get into the third one, yeah, I'll take a quick look at the insides of uh, Nasty Savage debut, which I forgot. Not too exciting, really. Uh, we do get uh, lyrics on one side, and there's a road runner press, and we get the, you know, your standard road runner logos there. So, yeah, not that exciting to show, but I did want to show it anyway. So, yeah, this is the one in the middle here Abstract Reality from uh, 1988, a solid EP. And now we're in 1989 for the last of their 80s run, the last of their run for quite some time. So they came back in sort of 2004, I think. I've not heard that album. Um, and they're still going now, but I think only Nasty Ronnie's the only person left. But in 1989, we got Penetration Point with a fairly goofy cover again. They don't really hit the mark with their covers. They're like all kind of okay but um, and fun, but you, know, you, you wouldn't hang them on your wall, I don't think. This one, okay, we've gotten even more technical. We've gotten even faster. Uh, the first track on here, Welcome Wagon, hits you suddenly and instantly with lightning double bass uh, and a very technical riff over the top of it. 
Uh, Ronnie is drinking a little bit more from that first album again, uh, getting a little bit weird in his sort of phrasings, but it is still got that gritty thrash sound to it. Um, and uh, musically, uh, it's faster and it is more technical. Uh, there's some odd sounding, I think it's probably the best way of saying it, odd sounding leads and some phrases in here that uh, kind of things that don't, don't fit on the surface but completely fit when you put it all together. The band is starting to, I don't want to say experimental, but they're definitely pushing the envelope a little bit here with uh, Penetration Point. Um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a top tier album. Um, if we look at the uh, the back here, there's the there's the band. We're, we're definitely looking at 1990 Slayer at this point. Look at them, absolutely shirtless, white t-shirt, band logo shirt, blue jet. I mean, it's it's all over the. Yeah, we just need some Oakleys or something, a Pit Vipers, and we'd be we'd be set. But anyway. Um, that first track, yeah, Welcome Wagon, it's got some funny bits, like it's got some samples. It's, it's all about, I think, uh, having door knockers come to your door and, and bothering you on a Sunday. Um, that seems to be what it's all about. And it's got some samples. It's got a little, little skit that starts and ends it uh, about trying to, you know, talk to whoever's behind the door. Ah, it's just the time, I guess, when you did these things. Uh, but then Irrational, the second track on here, uh, that really shows how progressive Nasty Savage are getting at this point. Scales that are played within the leads. Uh, really, really cool sounding guitar. Complex arrangements all over. Um, drums that speed way out of the comfort zone. I think, I think uh, what was his name here? Uh, Curtis Beeson. He's playing just on the cusp of his ability, I think, at some times here. Like it, he, never, he never goes past the mark, but Jesus getting close a few times here. Um, and Irrational is one of those tracks. Um, it's got more double bass on this album than they've ever had before. Really hammering it home. Uh, and Ronnie belts out a few high-end sort of falsetto kind of things, going back to that trying to do King Diamond every now and then. So, yeah, they're just really pushing it on this one. But they do keep the songs anchored to a chunky riff most of the time. So, you know, it's not just... Uh, we're not getting into the guitar virtuoso territory here. It is It is just it's proper metal. It's just getting more techy. It still has a riff bass to it, which is good. Uh, Ritual Submission, the third track on here. Sounds like I could have come off Rust in Peace. Give you an idea where we're going here with this music. Uh, David Austin's the lead guitarist. Which one's he? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll guess here if they're all written in order. They look like they are. Dave Austin there. I think they're left in the white. Um, he's bordering on David Chastain levels of technicality in how he plays on this album. Um, killer riffs, but he's all over the fretboard. So... Yeah, good job from him. I think he's a little bit underappreciated, perhaps, as as one of those sort of virtuoso guitars. Probably didn't do a solo album. I didn't check, but I doubt he did. Um, just sort of at, at home here in Nasty Savage. Um, Power Slam, great title. That one's got um, some sort of fast Slayer-esque kind of riffs going on in there. Um, the bass makes itself really, really known. A uh, very twangy sound that isn't following along with the, the regular guitar rhythm. Um, yeah, yeah. Sin Eater, another good track. Um, it opens with a harp. At least I think it's a harp. Some kind of very, uh, very classical uh, string-based thing with lots of flourish. It sounds like a harp to me. Uh, then the riffs and the drums, they sound like they'd fit on Beneath the Remains or maybe even Arise. This is a real savage one. Uh, the vocals, though, kick in, and uh, the, the complexities, the guitar that you hear, they, they leave, you know, Max and Andreas in, in the dust. I mean, this is well beyond the kind of stuff they were playing. And the drums start picking up a bit of a free jazz almost approach. We're so far away from the first album at this point. So like I said, Penetration Point is the last album the band did uh, for quite some time. I'm not sure if they broke up, took a pause or whatever, but there was nothing in the 90s. And they came back in uh, 2000 or so. And in uh, 2004, they did a new album. I haven't been game to listen to it. The cover is awful. The thing runs for like 55 minutes. I ain't got time for that. It's probably, look, it's probably going to let me down. So I don't think I'm going to bother, to be honest. Uh, but here, they really just, every album they were progressing and progressing, they got to this, this opus of uh, what you can do in late 80s technical thrash um, without being like full over the top witch tower. Like they're not, they're not at that type of level. Um, but the increase in everyone's prowess from the first album. It's just quite amazing to see over these these releases. Um, they started up straight heavy metal, and then they're now appearing with like Forbidden, 
at this point. So yeah, great stuff. Very era appropriate Morris Sound Studios production. Good meaty sound, which is why I guess I hear things like heathen victims of, uh, of deception in the sound. Um, whenever I hear thrash and Morris Sound, I'm always thinking of that heathen Sophomore album. It's just got the way that the, the, the staccato riffing works on that. So good. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is the Road Racer original uh from there you go just show it upside down from 89 uh there was a rotten records release same year uh discog says they're both us releases so i'm not too sure what's going on um but uh yeah it does have the rotten records imprint down there in the corner but it's also a road racer so there you go either way you're in uh you're in strong hands with nasty savage penetration point a stellar way to see out the 80s now i've always said there is something special in the water in canada the stuff that comes out of the bands there if it's thrash heavy metal death metal black metal it something's happening in canada i don't know what they're doing in the water maybe it's just all the, the landscapes the wonderful mountains i don't know what's going over there but they end up with bands and releases like this one from dioxin uh this is first among equals Great art. I love the artwork on this thing. Uh, a Canadian four-piece uh, techie thrash one and done album released in 1990. Um, well into that crossroads era of thrash when you were either going to go chunkier and slower and groovier or you were just going to double down and become progressive technical thrash titans like Hexen House or something. Um, Dioxin went for that latter pathway which is good i do prefer that style um and again it definitely reminds me of heathen um 1990 victims of deception uh, it's just a it's just one of those anchor albums for me i'm always thinking things sound like that dioxin's got it there too also uh belgium's target good reference point but definitely toxic toxic with a k here a lot here with dioxin uh but these guys are heavier and faster than fellow countrymen annihilator for sure particularly those first two albums Great albums, but uh, these guys are just smashing it. They're, they're a much heavier beast. So the rhythm riffs are incredibly speedy here on um, First Among Equals. Um, click on the back here. You don't get to see the band, but you do get to see some more of that glorious artwork. It's funny, but and it's amateur, but man, it's good fun. I rate it. It's good. Uh, vocalist Michael Sanders, um, he's got a solid, clean voice, hits some higher notes. Uh, really good fit for the music. Uh, drummer Derek Kerr, he's all over the map on here in thrash stylings. Really good player. Uh, Andy Morton on bass, uh, he's very clearly audible. Uh, doesn't go too experimental or anything, but you can definitely hear and feel the bass, which is good. Uh, guitarist Brett Stacy is definitely a skilled beyond, uh, has skills beyond what you would expect on a debut album. Um, and I didn't see much in the way of demos or anything. Like, it just kind of appeared, this band, and hit it out of the park on their first and only album, and all the musicians are just top quality across the board. And according to the Metal Archives, not a single one of them did anything before or after, at least in metal. No idea if they've all gone off and done some kind of progressive rock band that's not going to appear on Metal Archives, but there is nothing I could see about these guys, which is a shame. Because this thing rips, and it really deserved a sophomore, or at least the guys going and doing something else. Would really curious to hear what they would do in the death metal space. I think, I think they could have done something quite special in maybe like a pestilence kind of sound. I reckon they might have pulled that off, or like Gorgard's second album, you know, Erosion of Sanity. I reckon Dioxin could have moved into that path. But it doesn't matter. What we got here is a one and done album, and it's ripping tech thrash. Um, Definitely one of the better hidden gems I've discovered in recent years, for sure. And it really is hidden. Uh, released on CD, cassette, and uh, this LP in 1990 on a couple of labels. Uh, this one I've got here is the Active Records version. Um, the, uh, I can't remember the other ones, but it's, it's a few labels around that time, like three labels in total. 1990, that's it. No reissues on any format, ever. There's a bootleg CD floating around, that's it. There's, you, you have to dig you have to get a, a release from 1990 if you want to hear this band so that doesn't help um not sure why that is this definitely feels like something one of those um 
metal gems kind of labels, the ones that unearth and release retro thrash, you know. This stuff should get a second uh, a second chance at life, I think. More ears need to hear Dioxin, first among equals. Um, and, uh, yeah, Cargo Records, that's one of the other labels this came out on. But uh, we'll take a look at this, my active records release. There's the inner with the lyrics, just good. There's the band um, looking... I mean, it's black leather jackets across the board. Uh, just, yep, pretty metal, but also that, sort of that modern 1990s style here. Like, it's black leather jackets. There's no chains. There's no no anything like that. There's also not T-shirts and anthrax. Like, we're, I think we're, we're real metal dudes, but we're a bit progressive. That's what we're saying here. So, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, inside is just going to be black vinyl and there's the active records um damn things near mint so i did well there and yeah dioxin first among equals just bask in that cover artwork and the expanded version here on the back someone paid four dollars fifty or four euro fifty i don't know for this at some point dead set bargain i paid more than that but not too much um the lp doesn't go for too much uh cd it's one of those ones where the cd might cost you more than the lp but either way dioxin first among equals Top quality hidden gem thrash from Canada, 1990. Going about as far away from Canada as you can get for my next one here. And uh, this is the third album by this band and the first one for me. We are talking about Turbo from Poland uh, with, and you're going to have to bear with me, uh, Karoleria Zatana is how it's written anyway. Um translates to satan's cavalry when i th throw it through the googles um and uh yeah poland band polish band turbo and their third album they started in 1983 uh did two albums in a more traditional heavy metal sound that sort of eastern block heavy metal that was very um you know it was burgeoning at the time 83 84 um they were very much in line with that uh but by this third album it's 1986 we're in the thrash years here they followed suit. Uh, the band, uh, a little bit of a Polish homespun hero here, bit of a bit of an unknown entity outside of that country. I mean, people know. Obviously, I picked it up, but all of their releases, well, okay, this release at least only exists on Polish records and uh, CD and tape. And uh, even when it was reissued, it's only reissued by Metal Mind, who are a Polish label. Like, there's no American or British or whatever company German. Has picked it up and done a their version you got to go to poland and that's fine because this um this thing rips and it's totally worth your time vocally very gritty singing reminding me of pretty obviously cat with a k um the whole band really sounds like cat um as well as sort of aria out of russia i think there's very much similarities there uh it's all sung in polish so i've got no idea what's going on but you can get an idea from some of the song titles uh google translate again tells me look at the back whole thing's been handwritten God knows what I'm looking at. They've got run times. But this third track here, um, it is, uh, I've tried to I've tried to pronounce it the same way he pronounces it in the song, Suzuche Ochanye, Suzuche Ochanye, uh, which translates to Artificial Respiration. Uh, one of the faster songs on the album, uh, some quality leads, speedy double bass drums on this, really good. Um, it's sort of, I'd say it's peppy speed metal that starts dipping its toes in thrash. I wouldn't say it's, proper thrash all the way through um but uh, it's a sound that they did get to on the fourth album which i tried to get unfortunately it had sold from the seller uh, by the time i got to it uh but that's ostani wojowinik uh the last warrior that one translates to their fourth one i'd love to get that at some point um but this one here look how metal this guy is. he's got the the shoulder things are in in metal and studs he's a skull that's decaying he's got long hair he's in the wastelands of some kind of like mars i don't know what's going on outstanding um anyway the uh the fourth track on this one is um uh, Haley's comet and uh we've had a few speedy tracks and this one is a sort of crunchier doomier kind of track again um has some choral like vocals there in the background some sort of choral like chanting that kind of thing um but the speed comes back i'll flip it over again again i can't read any of it but um the uh the title track part one so uh satan's cavalry part one is part two uh, over here on side b um 
That one comes back with uh, the speed again and uh, has some sort of demonic vocals in it. And it's Satan's Cavalry, so yeah, there's some deeper, grittier kind of evil sounds in there, which is really cool. Um, the production on this is a uh, look. Look, it's it's mid '80s Poland and it's very insular. They've obviously had no outside help. It's a bit muddy. It's fine. Um, it you know if an American band was releasing it, they'd call it a demo. Uh, that's about all you got to say that's negative. It's perfectly serviceable, does the job. It's just not going to punch you in the face with clarity or anything like that. Um, it's a bit like, um, you know, getting those... I mean, the whole the whole experience here, listening to it and the physical item itself is like getting the early Cogumelo releases out of Brazil. Um, you know, that early production, it's not so great. And then actually getting a hand on it, if you do, like, the covers are always going to be G+. Plus. Like, you are never... The chances of finding like a near mint Cogumelo seems to be about the same as finding a near mint uh, Pronit or Pronit. I'm not too sure. That's the label out of Poland. They did a bunch of bands, um, and uh, yeah, like I'm just happy to have it. This this is a very thin piece of cardboard. Um, like if it, if it had anything on the spine, it's long gone. It's clearly been sitting on someone's coffee table for 30 years. Um, but the key thing, the most important thing, I've said it before. You can have a floppy, daggy looking cover adds charm what i care about is the record did you play it on a crosley suitcase or did you use a proper man's turntable and this person clearly did there's the inner um uh, label there which is kind of fancy um but aside from a couple of hairlines this thing's mint and it plays like new it plays like i didn't even bother washing it there was no need it plays like new um so yeah the um the record sounds brand new the cover does not but this whole thing here from turbo with uh, Satan's Cavalry is a quality piece of 1986 thrashy style Polish metal. <laughs> Next up, we have a British or at least a UK one and done band, but that's a one and done band with a giant asterisk, and we're going to get into that. It's got a glorious cover too. This is Talion with Killing the World. Gorgeous cover. I absolutely love it. You've got a Demon out of the sky, riding a missile. Um, there's like your, your ghoulish altars of madness kind of faces. The whole thing's amazing. And that giant logo written uh, made out of rock. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. But anyway, Talion. Uh, this was originally a band formed as Trojan. Uh, and they also had the little umlaut as Trojan. Um, and they were a bit more on the new wave of British heavy metal sound um, in, uh, in the early days. And they kind of got speedier. And they released one album called Chasing the Storm in 1985. The band then reformed all members, the same people, as a band called Lethal. They released a two-track demo tape that had uh, Killing the World, that song, and another song on it. And then, I don't know why, but then the band decided Lethal's not for them, and they called themselves Italian, got those two tracks and the rest, and released this album. So we have the final version here of Killing the World that includes those two tracks from Lethal, and one of them is the title track. Um, this is a, I'd say it's very speedy, but I wouldn't say it's a balls out nuclear thrash attack thrash album. Like it, it the, the cover might make you suggest nuclear assault. They're not at that territory here. The heritage of the early sound still remains. Um, you can hear the new wave of British heavy metal sound in the vocals, for example. Um, top of the game, huge pipes here from uh, Graham Wyatt on vocals. Um, and the drums are playing in a very, very old, a very analog sound. Um, it's not that uh, ripping fast drum sound that you would get in that mid '80s sort of thrash. Um, and going onwards, uh, th this is definitely still holding on to that '83 sounding way of playing drums, like an old Satan album or something like that. Uh, but it still, it still sounds great. There's the band looking incredibly metal, and there's your fire raining down from below. Good stuff um the first two tracks though killing the world and sanctuary they're they're fast they're some they're basically thrash tracks um the riffs go back to the basics of heavy metal though when you listen to a track like living on the edge that one is um that's a crowd please i've got to sing along i can hear it in my head like it's living on the edge i apologize but it literally has that like you could just about put it in the end credits of a movie that kind of thing. Like the credits are slowly going past it. Living on the edge. That kind of thing. It's good. You can see it in the big arena. Um, but it's sandwiched between a bunch of fast songs. So 
yeah, uh, side A closes with um, Speed Thrills, which is a, as it suggests, a fasty little one, but it is a uh, instrumental, and um, it's just all over the spectrum. That one, that's a that's a solid track. And side B is no different. It's the whole thing is good. It just ebbs and flows from the really fast things to sort of chunkier things, um, and stuff that goes back in time to when they were in Trojan days. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a really good album. The vinyl here was um, uh, it came out on Major Records. I'm gonna see if this can actually come across in the uh, in the video. I doubt it, but let's have a look at the um, the upside down. There you go. Some more great artwork there. Demon riding the bomb. Got a thanks list there on from Major Records. There's the band. A little bit more pro photos there. Like he's doing the real serious shot. He's <laughs> It was like I, I no, he's not doing the serious shot. That's some that's some goofy, goofy looking anthrax stuff right there. Everyone else though, like they were getting the middle photo ready. He's just like I'm down at the beach, and uh, yeah, half swimsuit or something. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, lyrics. But what's fun? Let's we'll see if it can come across. Uh, probably not though. You just have to believe me. Um, so there you got major records. That's who put this one out. And the engraving. This is not going to come across, but. Um, in the, the inner groove down there at the bottom, I'll reflect it a bit. I can't tell if it's working or not, but in that groove down there on the bottom, there's some uh, uh, written into the into the groove is we came, we saw, we kicked ass, and that's what it says on side A. And uh, side B, even more fun, it has lethal and then Trojan. So, you know, it's, it's a full it's a full picture here, right? They acknowledge who they are, where they came from, and uh, yeah. Good album here from not Trojan, not Lethal, but Talion. Um, brings us to the present day. The band are back together. And uh, just to make life more interesting, they call themselves Trojan again. And they're not releasing anything from what I can see, but they might be touring. They're listed as active. But they did release a five CD box set of basically every note that any of the imprints of this band have released, plus all the live tracks. It's just every all she done just as a five CD set. So if you want to explore the band, that might be the way to go. Um, this, this is a little difficult, this one to find, uh, this this record version. But yeah, really good stuff here from Talion, uh, a band I hadn't heard of. Um, when I was uh, taking a browse uh, and I saw this one, I just jumped at the cover. I thought, yeah, going to give this a go. Really glad I did. Talion, Killing the World. And the last one I'm going to show for this update, this part one of at least three updates for Metal May, is one I've wanted for years. Um, when I started to get into this buying 80s press thrash vinyl, I had a few things that were like key, things I really wanted. And of course, those things ended up being bloody expensive. And I've tracked down most of them. There are still a few heavy hitters that I haven't managed to get. But this one knocks one off the list. And I'm thrilled to get original press of Toxic World Circus 1987 debut from this New York four piece. And I've always loved that Ed Repka artwork. People, you love his art or you don't love his art, but you've got to say it's pretty iconic. I really dig this particular piece he's done, and it works well with that logo. Got the ringmaster here. It's got he's got he's pressed the button and it's unleashed all the fumes and chemicals that are coming out of that circus. And there's a war or something going down here. You've got people on horses versus army. I don't know what's going on there, but it's some kind of circus. But anyway, if you don't know Toxic, absolutely ripping example, particularly the opening track of Technical Thrash for 1987, uh, with vocalist Mike Sanders absolutely dominating the top end of the register. The man has pipes. Uh, the first track on here, Heart Attack, is a mission statement and a half. Um, it is super fast and technical. Savage song. Just, oh, it's so good. It's a super fast, super impressive uh, display of musicianship on that song. Uh, the second track, Social Overlord. Uh, Overload, not Overlord. There's a band. Now, that's how you do thrash right there. Bang, thrash. Leather jackets, blue jeans, thrash. Look at that hair. Just, yeah, thrash. Um, social overload down there. Um, this one uh, takes a bit more of a power, power metal y, like US power metal, so speed metal approach. Um, bass guitar is super upfront in that one, really jangly. Uh, the third track, Pain and Misery, such a thrash song title, uh, has the kind of riffs and syncopated kick drums that 
don't be put off by this. It's the kind of thing that a few years later you would hear on something like Cowboys from Hell. You know, Pantera made their entire career on that, that, that kind of sound. And you can hear it a bit in the verse of this track. Um, it, it hits the fast triplets as well, uh, again, something you would have heard on Cowboys. Um, but then the soaring solos on here, psh, giant bag, psh, toxic. Man, guitars all over the shop. Um, then Voices, uh, the next track, that one is just a uh, tech thrash. They've hit the tech thrash button. That button there, that's the tech thrash enabler. Click, you're in tech thrash mode. Lots of chops and changes in that one. It's all over the map. Good one to, to try and work out what's going on. Um, and the bass guitar taking prominence quite a few times in that song. Um, and the last one on side A, Door to Hell, Rabid. Rabbit is how do you describe that one. It really opens and ends the side with some of their fastest tracks. Side B is very similar in its approach, but um, there's some savage and complex riffs here from uh, Josh Christian. Uh, let's see, that would be this guy here, if the name is correct under the photo. Uh, he's a guitarist, and he's mad. He's just, he's quality, quality guitarist. Um, and, uh, yeah, much, much headbanging is had, and uh, the vocals from uh, Mike uh really hits some pretty wild notes i would say there he is here there's our vocalist doesn't look like a vocalist to me i would have picked this guy as a vocalist he's got the sebastian Bach look going on there this guy looks yeah he, he looks like the drummer but anyway he's the vocalist if uh if this can be believed here we'll just we'll just assume that it is um and uh yeah top quality uh side a ending that one and side, like I said, side B is no slouch either. The whole thing's great. I reckon Realm, Endless War, is a good companion piece for this album. Sits nicely with uh, World Circus from Toxic. Some of that middle era, maybe the third album, Coroner, I think as well. Good comparison. Paradox Heresy, another good one. Kind of all in the ballpark here, but I think that the technicality here from World Circus is is pretty outstanding. Um, when they're playing fast, and they, they, they play fast quite a bit, yeah, it's not just... Uh, speed for the sake of it some quality musicianship going on here i love it great album here world circus and now i really need the follow-up uh track the follow-up album um think this which has got a really cool blue cover very hard to find one day i will find the original press uh, we'll take a quick look in here and we get lyrics cool big thanks list more lyrics and Original Roadrunner on black, thin, strong VG+. Gave this one a bath. It did have a little bit of crackle. Gave it a bath. Cleaned it up nicely. And, uh, yeah, really happy to have Toxic World Circus. Fantastic tech thrash debut album from 1987. Um, and the band's still going. They did an album, I think it was this year or late last year. They're still going. I've not heard it, but, you know, they're still going. So, yeah, Toxic. <laughs> That's the last one I'm going to be showing in this, the first part of at least three OG press updates for Metal May. Um, that's eight out of 25. There's a few more to go, isn't there? What's that, 17 left? We'll see how we go with that one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, uh, leave some comments. Let me know which ones of these you're, you've got, you like, you'd like to buy, um, and just your, you know, your thoughts on sort of 80s vinyl and thrash and heavy metal. I find that that th this is the best combination, that mid-80s, early, mid, late 80s, heavy metal, speed metal, thrash metal, US power metal. For me, it just sounds right and looks right on vinyl, on LP. I don't, a CD and something like this doesn't make sense in my brain. For me, it's got to be vinyl. And I'm really, really happy to have a, quite a collection of it now. If you have a look at this little insert here, I've taken all my OG press. Um, well, it's not all OG press. Let's just say 95% of this is uh, original press. And there's some modern bands in here as well that fall into that uh, that sound of speed metal, thrash metal. But what you're seeing here is my tubs of um, predominantly original press, speed, thrash, heavy metal from the 80s, early 90s. And I love having them. I have love having them separately in these tubs where I can forward, forward facing. I can flick through them, look at all the art. Um, don't worry about, uh, you know, climate control in here. It's fine. It doesn't get too hot. It's all good. Nothing's going to melt. And I just love having them there. So yeah, that's where we're at with my metal collection. And you got two more parts for this series to go. Thanks for watching. 
Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Check out this thing. Check out this thing. And I'll see you next time.